Let me be the present. A play diet video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hey there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga game guide and review. In this week's episode, we'll be checking out Roller Coaster Rumbler, developed by Subway Software and published by Tinesoft in time for Christmas 1989. The game begins with the title sequence a static title screen reveals an introduction and some great music as well, which reminds us of a roller coaster, and it has a great bass line which introduces us to this game. The music is an original piece by RMS Special, and I've no idea who RMS is, maybe you can write in and let me know. Unfortunately, this is the only music that you'll find in the entire game, and apart from a range of sound effects, you won't get to hear this music again either until you reboot the system. By pressing the left mouse button, we are taken to the title screen, and from here we can select to start the game, or choose between one and two player mode. Let's just select one player mode, and check this game out. In this filled 3D vector game, we play inside a roller coaster, and at the start of the game, we'll be thrust into that. And you can see we play as Tom Cruise in charge of a high velocity machine gun stuck on the front of a roller coaster. This game was played on an expanded Amiga 1200, on a basic Amiga 500, it is a lot less smooth and dare I say a little jerky but of course an Amiga 500 is no match for an Amiga 1200 with fast RAM and you can see the graphics are smooth enough. In this game we must stay on the roller coaster and blast everything in front of us. Everything which moves can be shot and everything which moves must be shot in this game. Right at the bottom you can see the target count and that target has to count all the way down to zero in order to complete a level. That means shooting everything on the level, and at the beginning it's fairly easy shooting all these things away, but it will get harder as the game goes on. By pressing the right mouse button we can toggle between the forward and the rear view and so we can even take a look behind us and shoot things behind as we travel along. Once in a while our roller coaster will also speed up and you also find blocks in the way that you have to shoot out otherwise we'll take damage. You can see the damage under the speed is depleting and these high speeds it's very difficult to shoot or we need to shoot on this level. This being a roller coaster it will wrap around itself eventually and now we have wrapped around one loop we are returning to the sections that we've already covered earlier and so you can see I've already cleared this space. You'll also find various vehicles in this game and various aircraft will dive bombers and if any of one of those bombs manages to hit that target obviously it will drop out and that's game over. You only get one life in this game and once that roller coaster bombs out that is it. 
or if you run out of bullets in this case that is it and that means game over all we can do is return to that high score table and enter our name There are various ways we can die in this game. One of those is to run out of bullets that we've seen already. Another one is to take on too much damage. And you can see that damage meter is already at the bottom. One severe collision with one of these things will mean the entire thing flips off the rails. And that's game over. When the roller coaster speeds up, you have to hit those targets in order to not get that damage. And if you miss one time, well, that's it. There is no way back. So it's very easy to die in this game if you're not watching damage and watching those bullets. And sometimes it can be a lose-lose situation when you just have too much damage and nothing you can do about it. In this game, we can also play two-player mode. And you can see the roller coaster appears on the title screen if you leave that to roll. And the great advantage of a two player game note, those two players don't take it in turns to fire, they actually fire together on the same screen. So, hopefully, with two players on the job one on joystick, one on mouse, maybe two on mice then this game maybe becomes twice as easy. Unfortunately, if player 2 decides to use the joystick, which is the cross on the screen, you can see it's pretty hard to line things up with the joystick, and I am missing most of these targets doing that. So, two mice is definitely recommended. But, let's check out the one player experience, because, of course, two player experiences are always enhanced, and you can see by destroying those bombs ejected by that fighter, we actually take five credits on the target count, and so all you need to do is blow up all those bombs and you can really rack off those targets and complete the level nice and early. Unfortunately, it's never as easy as that. And of course, if you run out of bullets either way, or if you take too much damage, then you'll find yourself unable to continue. And look at that, nine remaining, eight remaining, and unfortunately, I died. So it's very easy to die in this game and sometimes at random, those bombers can literally throw us off the track and so this was not unrehearsed this playthrough was definitely practiced and this is how far I got with this game so for the final time let's have a look at this first level and let's see if we can't get any further with it And by clicking the mouse button, yes, we can skip these screens, which is under godsend. And introduction screens are all very well, but does the game actually stand up? Well, as a rail shooter, it stands up. And as I say, maybe on an Amiga 500, it's a little slow. But on a 1200, 3000 and above, it's fine. And it's pretty comparable to the Atari ST version. You might be surprised that this was also released on the Commodore 64, although you'll be very surprised to find that the C64 version was very much different to this and borderline unplayable. But at least the Amiga version is playable and at least deserves more than the bottom scores. You might also be surprised to learn that this was only the second rail shooter in history after the original Star Wars arcade cabinet developed by Atari, of course, and released in the arcade in 1983. The very next real shooter was released in 1993, that was called Rebel Assault. And, of course, many players have played Rebel Assault. But back in these days, real shooters were very rare, and as far as I know, this was only the second in existence. <laughs> As we complete one loop, you'll find bonus items on the side of the track, and so that will give us bonus targets. So we can wave the pointer wildly and loosen a few bullets, and that can often reap its own rewards. To complete this game, it's a good idea to clear away as many targets on the first loop as possible, 
and that should mean you can save bullets and aim clearly on target over the rest. This game was designed by Subway Software, headed up by Bill Kunkel, Lionie Katz and Joyce Worley, and together they produced games for Tynesoft, including Circus Games, Beverly Hills Cop, First Person Pinball, and also Buffalo Bill's Wild West Show. The music of the title sequence was RMS Special, and once again, no idea who that was, although I feel it's a slight shame there is no music in the game. This game was coded by Gary James Gray, who is probably more famous for Alan Border's Cricket, which became Graham Gooch's World Class Cricket in 1993. The graphics were drawn by Philip Nixon, and he drew the great graphics for games like Turn and Burn, Trolls and the AJ version, Oscar and the AJ version, Morph, Demon Blue and both of the Elvira games on the Amiga. You can see I'm destroying the bombs in order to wipe my total down as fast as possible. Unfortunately in rear view we don't get to see the total targets and if you are unlucky enough to be wiped out by a bomb there's nothing you can do about it. I don't even think you can blow up these aircraft but you can blow up these projectiles and Hopefully after all that we shouldn't be, well, five targets to go, one more projectile clears that level. And taking down bombs is certainly the easy way to complete a level in this game. After an unusual dinosaur themed presentation screen we move on to the second level. And you can see the second level moves a little bit faster and it's more full of those targets. air that you saw swinging around is actually extra ammunition and if you find any extras on the level it's best to wait to shoot those away and save that extra ammunition so you really need it. Sometimes it doesn't even give you extra ammunition and you only have enough bullets left to complete the level. And you may saw T there, that was just extra time I think. And even though we have a time limit in this game, which is slowly ticking down, really you will lose bullets and health quicker than you will lose time. You can see the levels become mayhem pretty quickly and these interweaving roller coasters are really impressive at high speed and sometimes you have to preempt all these blocks otherwise you'll get slaughtered before you find the time to get anywhere. I think as a rail shooter it works very well and of course it's very novel to find a roller coaster shooting game. In fact this is probably the only roller coaster action fest on any computer anywhere and you can certainly see it's not slow and there's plenty of action going on. Some of the comments said that this game was fairly repetitive, but perhaps level 1 is repetitive. After that, it really is a job to concentrate and to complete the further levels. On to the scores, ASM Magazine, the German ASM Magazine gave this 43%, Ace gave it 46%, the current score on LemonAmiga.com is 55%, and Amiga Joker gave this the highest score at 68%, and that means the average score for this game is 5 out of 10, and I feel it's slightly a shame, and it really does have something going for it, particularly on the faster end Amigas, and it's not easy and it's definitely a skill ride all the way through. So thank you once again for discovering this undiscovered gem on the Amiga. Perhaps you will have better luck than me. But I hope to see you again on another play guide and review sometime soon. Thank you.